Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into wife disables security cameras to cheat while husband is away on business. Come, let's explore these real life stories. I've been with Carmen for 18 years, nearly two decades of shared memories, dinners, and holidays. But recently, things started to feel off. I travel a lot for my work as a cybersecurity expert, often leaving the house under Carmen's care. That's when I noticed the odd behavior of our security system, it would go offline for hours, with no apparent reason. When I asked Carmen, she seemed clueless, saying she didn't touch it and mentioned possible power outages. But something didn't sit right with me. So, I did a little digging. I called our neighbor, a friendly guy always keen on neighborhood happenings. He told me there hadn't been a power outage recently, and I already knew that, but I wanted to talk to someone in the neighborhood. That got me thinking. I didn't confront Carmen with this discrepancy, instead, I noted it, a small piece in a puzzling behavior pattern that was starting to form. On my next trip, I decided to take action. Waiting until Carmen was out for a spa day with her friends, I installed additional cameras, both indoors and outdoors. They were hidden, not to be noticed by an untrained eye. I wanted to know what was happening when I wasn't around, and this seemed like the only way. A week later, another business trip came up. As expected, the security system went offline at the same time it usually did. But this time, I was prepared. The indoor cameras were my eyes within the house. They showed a clear picture of what was happening. Carmen was disabling the system deliberately. Each night, at the same time, she would turn it off, and that's when he would arrive, just before midnight. He would leave before dawn, and that's when she would reactivate the security system. It was a shock, a betrayal of everything we had built over the years. But I didn't confront her. I chose to act silently. I called an attorney and started the process of filing for divorce. I needed to handle this with precision and care, for my own peace of mind. Carmen went to visit her parents for a few days. That's when I moved out temporarily. I wasn't abandoning my home, I just couldn't stand the thought of sharing a space with her after knowing the truth. When she returned, she was puzzled by my absence. She kept asking, probing, trying to understand what was happening. I kept my responses short and vague. You'll find out soon enough, I told her. The day she was served with divorce papers at her job, where she's a branch manager for a bank, must have been a shock to her. I could imagine her face, the confusion, the realization slowly sinking in. Her lawyer painted me as the neglectful husband during the divorce hearing, but the evidence was undeniable. The judge saw right through the facade, and it was game over for Carmen. After the divorce, she attempted to apologize, but I wasn't ready to hear it. The betrayal was too deep, the wound still fresh. I exposed her actions to our circle of friends and hers too. Some people will say it was petty, but I had to do it. This was a way to close that chapter of my life. Her request for alimony was denied. The judge saw her misuse of our savings, going out for dinners, buying things for him. It was another piece of the puzzle, another betrayal of our shared life. In divorces, financial transparency is a must, that was something I learned through the process. Bank accounts, savings, everything comes to light in the end. The only thing Carmen received was half of the proceeds from the house when we sold it, a small price to pay for the peace of mind and closure I eventually found. I never found out who the guy was. Somehow, this guy was good, his face was never in the footage. He always had a hoodie on, or his back was turned toward the camera. After the divorce and the selling of the house, I also started exercising more, taking care of my body as well as my mind. The runs in the early morning seemed like they gave me mental clarity before I started my day. About three months after the divorce, I was at the grocery store and there was a tap on my shoulder. It was Carmen, she wanted to talk to me. I didn't have anything to say to her then. She insisted. I told her again she was wasting her time, but she wouldn't give up. I told her she had one minute. She proceeded to tell me that she was lonely, she wasn't thinking right, her friends kind of influenced her a little. 
I shook my head and walked away. A few days later, I changed my number. I didn't have anything to say to her. I was still angry at her, even after the divorce. I threw myself into my work, still traveling a lot for my job, even met a couple of women while I was away. One day, when I got back from a business trip, there was a large envelope at my doorstep. Didn't know who it was from, and I wasn't expecting a package. It was an SD card and a note from my ex-wife. I thought, what the hell? I didn't give this woman my address. How in the hell did she find me? I was hesitant to put the SD card in my computer, afraid it might have a virus. I had an old computer that was still working and used a PC to play back the SD card. It was my ex-wife, taking selfies in lingerie, telling me she missed me, all this crazy. I destroyed all of it. What makes her think I will touch her again? I wanted to call her and tell her to stop contacting me, but I didn't want to give her my new number. Fast forward a month, I was walking into my home office at 7 o'clock in the morning, and guess who was waiting for me in the lobby? When she saw me, she got up. I put my hand up and said no and told her to get out. I told her I didn't have anything to say. She said please again. I said no. She walked out with the coldest look on her face I have ever seen. When she gets out the door, our security guard looks at me and says, Man, you need to take some precautions with that woman. He began to tell me that my ex-wife has been coming around a lot, asking for me. He said she would sit in the parking lot for at least two to three hours, looking for me. I thought to myself, doesn't she have a job? Well, that wasn't the last I saw of my ex-wife. She ended up at my house at 3.16 in the morning one day, knocking on my door. Now, she was starting to freak me out. When I was dating her, she never displayed this type of behavior. I told her to get away from my door. The next thing you know, she shouts forget you and throws a brick through my window. I called the police and made a report. A few hours later, I went down to the police station to file an injunction to get a restraining order, but I was given a temporary restraining order. I didn't see or hear from my ex-wife again for at least two months. I was at work one day, and I got a call from our security guard, telling me I had a visitor, and he told me it wasn't my ex-wife. It was a friend of my ex-wife. She began to tell me that my ex-wife has gone off the deep end. She tells me, after I rejected my ex-wife's advances, she has become obsessed and told me to be careful. Then she takes out her phone and shows me text messages my ex-wife has sent her. One of the texts she sent, she was telling her friend that she will not give up trying to get me back. Well, after that, I went home early that day and installed new cameras on this house and bought a new security system. That's where I am right now. If you love the story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.